Welcome to Campfire Football. I'm Sebastian Knorr. I'm going to give you all a quick little segment today, mostly because there weren't a whole ton of games, but a few nice storylines. And I'm going to start with one I missed from yesterday. I mentioned that Sheffield United finally went, won a game, but I forgot about the team that broke one of the longest winless streaks I've ever seen in the game. Schalke. Congratulations to them. They beat Hoffenheim 4-1. Matthew Hoppe, the American young man, scored a really nice hat trick. Three sublime finishes. And a really, really just an impressive way to get out of this funk. They hadn't won a game since January 17th, 2020. I was like 357 days. I don't know. I maybe got my arithmetic wrong or there's a leap year thing if I got that wrong. But... It's incredible. The previous record was 31 games. This was the 31st. That was over 50 years ago. And I think the thing to keep in mind, Schalke are not a club that should be anywhere near considered for a club that will go through this, basically. There's, it's, just, it's impossible to think that a club that has a squad built to qualify for the Champions League on an annual basis is fighting that kind of record. You might expect it from a team who just got promoted, had an amazing first half of the season, secured enough points to basically have survival then, and then crashed as soon as the new year came and didn't correct their form when the season started again. That's what you would expect. Not a team like Schalke, not a club of that stature. Meanwhile, Borussia Dortmund, their arch rivals, you know, are doing what they're doing. And so Schalke, this has got, this has to have been the worst year ever to be a Schalke fan. And if you are one, I really hope that you're one of those people that's sticking with your team because these dark days will end. They will. I promise. Just one other little piece of fun that came from this is Weston McKinney, who obviously now plays at Juve but came from Schalke in the summer. Him celebrating this win in his own apartment, taking the video of himself, really good. Check that out. YouTube it. It was a lot of fun. So now I'm going to get into the little bit, the slim section here. Uh, the Not the meat in terms of the most important, but, you know, the thin part of the sandwich. Chelsea. I'm a Chelsea fan. I'm wearing my Chelsea jersey. Both the men and the ladies played today, almost at the same time, a little bit staggered, and both won 4-0. So because that happened, I'm going to go ahead and give a little update. And for any of you who are Chelsea fans who know absolutely what happened in the men's game, I won't go too much into that. I'll also talk about the ladies as well. First of all, I'll just cover the men quickly. It was nice to see them win. They beat Morecambe, a team who I don't think any one of their players that I saw would would even fit into the Chelsea squad, maybe not even the other 23s. So they needed to win this game, and they needed it to be comfortable uh, with no real scares there was almost one in the beginning but Kepa actually made a pretty good save on a weird accidental cross shot kind of thing in the end Timo Werner gets a goal assisted by Kai Havertz who he himself also scored he got the fourth Callum Hudson-Odoi got a very much needed goal and Mason Mount scored from distance which I think is really really important that he gets goals from range to build that confidence to start shooting more something Honestly, I don't see enough anymore. I mean, I wonder how all you feel, but I don't think I see enough players go and have a pop from range just because they're like, yeah, I'm I'm good enough at this. I I hit a lot of really good shots. Rashford is one of those players. Fernandez takes a lot of shots. De Bruyne is sometimes, I think he loves the pass, but there aren't that many players that love to have a pop. Frank Lampard is one of those players. Gerrard is one of those players who, for me, did that a lot. They had a window. They took it because they knew they had the technique. And they scored a lot of brilliant goals, and it was fun to watch. So, would love to see that more. Moving on to the ladies. They played Reading at the Medeski, which is kind of cool, even though it's large and empty. But great game, and Fran Kirby, player of the day, by the way. Of any player I saw play today, Fran Kirby wins the award. She looked sharper than any human being I saw touch a football today. Scored a first-half hat trick, perfect hat trick, by the way, left foot, right foot, header, and then scored his header in the second half. Her two goals with her feet, these were really impressive because they were 1v1s, but there were two 1v1s. First, she had to beat a player and then went into the box and then beat the goalkeeper as well. And, you know, this is a really, really talented player. For any of you who don't know much about the ladies' game, go ahead, try and follow it. 
ATA TV is out there, ATA football, ATA football. And if you watch games on there, you might you might get to see some real quality football. I, I have as well. And look, Fran Kirby is a player who England has rested a lot of uh, hopes on. And I think she's now starting to get back to her best after going through a really tough illness. And I'm excited for that. As a Chelsea fan, it's really cool. And also, big props to Emma Hayes, the Chelsea coach. I really, really like her. I've actually seen her run a session at a coach's convention here in the United States. And she's incredible. Her candor, her professionalism, and just her overall personality is something anyone can really respect and like and take something from and learn from. So go ahead and check her out, Emma Hayes. All right, moving on to the FA Cup. Crawley versus Leeds. Now, I'm not surprised when I see FA Cup upsets. But when I see a 3-0 for a team in the fourth tier, meaning in League 2, against a Premier League team, I immediately say, okay, what did the squad look like? Leeds, they had a shockingly Premier League-able team on the field and were beaten 3-0 by a team in the fourth tier. So that's not good for Leeds. Um, I think of all the criticism they've taken lately, which has been unwarranted today, they could have probably actually been thrown under the bus because they had quite a few big names starting the game, quite a few big name players on the bench, and they were thrashed in the end, pretty much entirely in the second half. So excellent achievement for Crawley. Really excited for them to get to the next round. Hopefully they play another Premier League team. That would just be great. And let me end with Marine versus Spurs. Look, everyone had been excited about this for a while. Marine versus Mourinho. And I, yeah. it, it, it's been a fun thing. And though it was not a classic FA Cup affair in terms of football, because Spurs won 5-0, there are still the beautiful FA Cup storylines to take from it and sights and sounds and everything. So I'm just going to take you f- through a couple of the things I enjoyed. And then that'll be it, really. So... First off, for Spurs, Alfie Devine, youngest player ever to feature in a competitive match for Spurs, and then went ahead and scored. He's 16 in 163 days. That's awesome. I I mean, you know, if you can remember what you were doing and what you felt at 16, if you got to experience a moment like that, you would have just been over the moon not knowing what to do with yourself. Imagine going home and having dinner with your family and you got friends and everything texting you. I mean, it'd just be a cool thing. So spare a little moment for Alfie Devine. And one little note on all those Mourinho haters out there who say he doesn't bring up young talent. There's a lot of young kids in this Spurs team that are getting chances and looking really good. And I'd never heard about him before today. This is his first time featuring. Scored a goal. Great story. These kinds of things don't happen in Premier League football. A kid like him doesn't get the substitution. But in the FA Cup against Marine, this story happens. So for any of you FA Cup haters, any people who are like, who cares about that competition? This is why we care about that competition. Moving on to Marine, the other big reason the FA Cup is beautiful. A team from the eighth tier hosts a Premier League team in their home stadium. Which, by the way, when you look just outside the ground at the backyards in the alley, they're numbered with the address so that you know which house to knock on when you boot your ball over the fence. Now, no fans allowed in the stadium, but the people were there. They were around the outsides, and we got a lot of great shots. We got shots of a bunch of kids squirreling around by the fences, taking a look inside, fiddling around with the phone, who's going to videotape, taking pictures, groups of women and maybe you know teenage girls hanging out having a cup of champagne with their big down jacket, just having a nice time out in the winter. And then I got to say, winner of the day for me, and I, I, if you saw this, I imagine it was probably also gave you a kick. I don't know who this guy was, but there was a dude with a life-size cutout of Jurgen Klopp, and he was standing next to it with his arm around it side by side for the whole game. And this guy didn't look like he was just smiling and having a good time. He was He had like the same serious look that Klopp had. It was really funny. But you only see that kind of thing in these kinds of FA Cup ties. And so though the football may not be at the level that we want to see on a weekly basis with these gorgeous pitches and these these beautiful team moves that result in goals that make us ooh and ah, this is also part of the game. And I hope that some of you who, though you love quality football as much as anyone else, 
you also tuned in to see the other side of football, which is the beautiful thing. It's people coming together. It's surely being able to win a game and now being viral as a team for singing Adele in the locker room. It's surely, it's Crawley Town beating Leeds and moving on. I mean, we remember so many stories about the FA Cup. I don't need to get into any or wax lyrical. If you don't know how many fun, crazy, cultish stories there are about this competition, treat yourself. There are so many YouTube videos. Type in FA Cup classic moments, fan moments, whatever, and you'll learn a little something because this is the oldest cup competition in world football. And anyone who is registered in a league, in an official league, in the FA, whether you're amateur all the way to pro, you're in this competition. There is no better place to see the Cinderella story. So, I hope you all enjoyed today. This is Campfire Football. Have a great night.